gloves. This is a duct tape, zip ties, and gloves. I have to have my tools. Hi, everybody. We are here with Andrea Garamia. Hey. Did, did I say that correctly? Uh, yeah, I mean, usually in, in German it's Geremia, in Italy we say Je, Jeremia, so we have the strong G, but don't worry, Geremia is fine. <laughs> Jeremia, but it's still yeah. Andrea, right? Andrea, yeah, it's correct. Okay. Perfect. Gotcha. So, uh, we're having you on as the first episode of Tony's uh, Tool Time, uh, this is Tool Time and Nuke. Uh, it's Tony put together a bunch of uh, tools, which I am like, I can't live without now. I've used like three or four of them, and I'm like, oh my gosh, where were these tools back in the day? Um, but his uh, Nuke Survival Toolkit has a whole bunch of different um, tools in it, and many of which are yours. Um, so it's a recommendation, so to speak. And we'll, we'll have a link at the bottom for anybody that wants to download the GitHub off of Tony's link. And then you'll have all those tools uh, at your... Uh, access for free and so we're gonna mm -hmm. we're, st we're basically kicking off this first episode of getting in and meeting the authors of some of these tools and getting uh, a little bit background showing some practical examples of how they're used in the industry in case you ever want to like you know pick them up so they're available um, so you have a huge background here this is a uh, Andrea Geremia uh, IT slash index dot HTML uh, right. Yeah, it's just uh, Andrea dot uh, it. That one is just the oh, okay. uh, the index page. So yeah. this thing here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so you got your you worked on tons of movies. Let's see if my website's working. Here's your show reel <laughs> portfolio, all your work, and you have an absolute ton. How long have you been putting this stuff up here? Because there seems like a lot of stuff on here. Uh, yeah, I try, I mean, year by year, just put in some stuff, uh, tutorial. Uh, usually, um, I mean, I start doing something just for me because uh, usually when you work, uh, you know, you need something, you don't remember how to do something. And so it was really good to have just a cloud for me. And then I had the idea to put everything just for everyone uh, to share with all the community, you know, some tutorials, collection, and whatever and I guess yeah I mean it's fine like Tony and all the other users do so that's why I, I like I have a kind of blog uh, gizmo on my on my website does does every senior compositor eventually get to the point where they're like I am gonna just make some tools or is it just a few specific people um yeah, um, I don't know. Basically, uh, I, I guess, yeah, with the experience, uh, uh, tutorial, I mean, it's, it's something connected with the experience, I would say. So, of course, a junior has less experience. So even for me, at least uh, some years ago, uh, but, you know, um, you you start to, to study, to learn something, one specific topic. So I start, for example, with the matrix in Nuke, or in general with the 3D and, I mean, Comp 3D. And so that's why I did a tutorial just based on that. Then I start with expressions, with Python. I have a solid background with scripting, comping, uh, copying, and that's why I, I like, I mean, to do something with Python, uh, expressions, and all these kind of things. Uh, but yeah, Basically, I guess every everyone can do something for for the others because uh, even some senior compositor can learn something new, and I mean I guess it's, it's good for everyone. Now I, I remember uh, Tony was talking about and I, obviously Python uh, to a certain degree uh, to a certain degree uh, new compositors should know Python. Um, but what is Blink Script? I'm not familiar with a lot of programming languages. Uh, that makes it faster, right? Or... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not familiar too. Uh, I, I work with, with Adrian. Adrian knows um, uh, Blink Script very, very well. Uh, I'm not good with Blink, Blink Script. It's in my to-do list. Uh, but I guess, yeah, it's really, it's really light. Uh, I mean, it, it's lighter compared, for example, some notes. Uh, and you can do, I guess, what I understood, something that with just notes, uh, you, you can't uh, usually do. 
and it's something different from uh, from from Python. I mean, it's always uh, something scripting and something like that, but it's another language. I would say maybe it's uh, C, C plus plus, or something like that. I guess I'm not sure. Would, a, uh, would Code Academy be a good place to go if somebody wanted to learn Blink Script? Like um, I, I saw uh, once I saw on LinkedIn a tutorial, something like Blink, Blink Script 101. I don't remember the user, but yeah, I guess uh, even on the, the Foundry website, there's something, some tutorials or some scripts that you can just download it out and just learn something. Uh, it, it's not something really doesn't have a good documentation. So maybe that's why there are not so many people just doing something in, with Blink Script, I guess. And the benefit is that just the nodes themselves or the, the interaction with the, 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 the gizmos is a lot faster? Yeah, exactly. I guess okay. it's really, really faster compared to the, you know, the custom gizmo. And I, I guess also you, you can do something that with nodes you can't usually do. And th that's why, I mean, if you know Blink Script, it's good to use it. So, I mean, did you guys all sort of like, you know, like the trickster posse where you guys like all like starting to like share scripts and kind of get into the script making? Because it seems like um, you and Adrian and Tony seem to be like the big script masters, you know. <laughs> no, I, I guess the big script master in, in trickster was uh, Alexei, our supervisor, com supervisor. Uh, he's the, the the guide of uh, of trickster. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess uh, sharing the the knowledge. Uh, I mean, I, especially in trickster, sharing the knowledge and, and everything is something that they like to push. And I mean, it's good for everyone, not just in trickster. I mean, for for the community, for everyone to learn something new. You know improve your skills uh, and I guess uh, I saw s some questions uh, about your video that they were asking okay how can I learn Python how can I learn math uh, something like that uh, I guess you you have to go step by step uh, so start from the basics uh, and then you can do something I mean day by day something more complex uh, uh, I would say there are so many tutorials, for example, in my script that you can download um, from this video. You, there are some tutorials, some links uh, that you, you can just watch and, I mean, learn something new. But maybe the, the good thing is, uh, okay, this is my goal. I want to do this tool. I want to do something uh, for me, uh, for the community. So just uh, put that goal and try to reach it out. Uh, I guess it's something good to to learn a new new operation, new skills, new something new. Okay. So you have a extensive history here. Uh, according to your LinkedIn, you've worked at uh, MPC Frame Store. Yeah. Um, and are you you're currently in uh, what town in Italy? Sorry. Uh, where are you in Italy again? Or yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm in Italy. I'm in Roma. Uh, oh, wow. I mean, I was uh, I worked almost two years in Trickster in uh, in Munich, and then I moved to London. So I worked before in uh, in MPC, and then uh, I went to Framestore till uh, till March, so the beginning of the virus, and then I came back uh, to Italy. Uh, I work from home uh, for this company, Italian company, uh, is uh, Edi, uh, E D I. So basically, it's the visual Italian visual effects it will be. Um, and then right now I'm in Rome. I'm working for Chromatica. It's a, I mean, a small company, but in Italy it's really, really good. I mean, there is the, this big name in Italy, Chromatica. And it's a really nice company, more, you know, I would compare it more like Trickster, more like a family, and it's a really good company. And yeah. Well, um, IMDb, you've got a lot of um, films in here, very, very uh, kind of parallel to some of the guests that we've had on, uh, um, Adrian and, and Tony and so forth. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and everybody else. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I mean, we worked together from Captain Marvel, I mean, uh, till, uh, I guess, uh, Guns Akimbo. And yeah, for three, four, uh, 
projects. And yeah, I mean, it's not uh, this so long list, but I mean, <laughs> the, uh, it's good. And we're going to be going over your... Uh, we're going to kind of start at the top of the list of this thing uh, as much as we can, but you also want to show some of the other scattered uh, yeah. uh, gizmos that are within the Nuke uh, Survival Toolkit, which is totally cool. Um, I'm, I'm all for as many as we can, and if we need to, we might come back to you a couple months later or something. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> um, there's so much. Um, do you mind if we just show your show reel real quick? Just kind of, yeah, yeah, if fine. you want to do a quick commentary no over it. I'm, um, I'm kind of evacuating the show, uh, the interview show that I had before, which was mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. asked to be effective because I think we've asked everything we can, and it, with over 20 hours of, I think it's time to jump into the tool sets. I think that's what people want should be learning. I mean, and benefit. Yeah, they can the just keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the beginning there are um, some shots from uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, from uh, so from Trickster, um, I started there as a junior comp. They moved me in in comp to, in comp department for this project. Uh, we had uh, I don't remember maybe two hundred shots, uh, maybe even more, and it was really really a cool project. And yeah, it was my first project for Marvel. And then, yeah, I did just, I have just one shot from uh, the new James Bond movie, from the trailer. Then I worked for Maleficent, uh, the second movie for MPC, and of course Cats. I guess <laughs> in Europe, almost every compositor has uh, That's the most disturbing movie shot. in the history yeah. of films. Or is, is it, what, I mean, how did they do this? I mean, was it like a CG cat and then you had to just stick a... Yeah, it's a CG cat. I mean, the director wanted to uh, keep the hands uh, and the face uh, from the, the plate. Uh, so basically, in, uh, in, in prep, uh, they removed the real actress. Uh, there is a really big, big, big um, work uh, from uh, Roto Animation. And so basically, in, for example, in this shot, there are at least, I guess, 20 cats uh, in the background. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. If you see every cat as the proper hands from the actor, and of course the face, and so it's really uh, there are so many quantity of CG and work in this movie, and of course uh, everyone knows uh, <laughs> the movie. But yeah, I, I like to work on it because we had to fix uh, a lot of problems, as you you know in like in every movie, but in this case, uh, so many problems in really a uh, small quantity of time. And yeah, it was a quite good project. We have, uh, we were a really strong team in comp and in every department. So yeah, I mean, at, at the end, I liked that movie because of the team and, you know, and everything. So it was for MPC, it was my first time in London and I like it. You know, it's funny you say that because um, I just recently got hired on at a VFX house uh, based out of Los Angeles, and uh, they do Netflix and HBO movies and so forth. And for the first time, I'm starting to really appreciate the problem-solving enjoyment of composite, yeah. not just, hey, make some flashy shots, it's how do we solve this? <laughs> And it becomes yeah, exactly. an adventure in of itself, and there's no flashy uh, reward out of it. You know what I mean? No, no, no. You know, it's... no, absolutely. So, so yeah. what? Yeah, what I would say, I appreciate the the work and and, and everything. Of course, uh, I mean, I, I don't care about the uh, the budget of the movie. You know, the um, the let's say the success of the movie. So. Uh, in this case, I just watch the the quality of the image uh, and, and everything. So there are so many decisions that they have to take the director, uh, photography, and everything. So we we don't care. We just do our work, and that's it. So so and, every one of these people was uh, was it somebody yeah. on set basically? Was you had to paint yeah. around, and then you you yeah. stick in the fur body, but you maintain just the very 
like exactly. the hand, but not the actual like uh, not not yeah. the forearm, but just the not, hand and the not head. Not the arm, not the arm, not the wrist. Okay. I mean, in the wrist here, you have the groom in CG that should should blend with the real hand. So you you should see the groom here in the upper part of the hand, but keep uh, you know the lower part as uh, the real one, uh, especially. If uh, I mean, with the shots uh, that you see the face of the cat, uh, the director wanted to see really the expression, the real expression of the actress. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to judge. Uh, you you could like it uh, or not, but I mean, <laughs> that was our... I never uh, saw it, so I could never say, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, Perfect. when you got the plate shot for this shot, I mean, obviously, these are all CG characters with the exception of yeah, their head a... and their arm, uh, hands. So you had to, I mean, with so much interaction, how do you clean plate something with something yeah, moving exactly. behind it and I mean, behind uh, it? We, we didn't clean up uh, all the plate. I mean, they did it in, I guess, in India, sometimes in London. Okay. Uh, but the, the best thing was to, to deal uh, with all the CG because every cat uh, was in deep comp and at least uh, we had uh, four elements uh, for every cat. So the body, the tail, uh, I guess the hands because they did the hands in CG and uh, sometimes you have to cut out the CG hands and just leave the real one. Sometimes uh, you could use the, um, the, I mean, the CG hands in just, uh, uh, in, I mean, special case. But the, the real, um, I mean, uh, uh, worst part of the project was to deal with all the CG because it was massive, it was really heavy and you had to create uh, one script just for five cats. Uh, for example, in this scene, I, I guess there are, I don't know, maybe 30 cats. I, I had at least uh, six scripts for each cat. So, uh, and then uh, you have to pre-comp uh, every script uh, and then put together without, oh the, without the deep uh, uh, information in just one uh, final script. So you, you have to... Um, also prepare and study before how to divide uh, you know the cat in this case it just created one group uh, for the foreground one for the mid uh, and coming really close so to... basically 100 terabytes per shot <laughs> uh yeah kind of kind of i'm like joking you're like yeah it was about that <laughs> uh, but yeah uh... really for for this kind of shot was really massive the script and uh, the dimension of, of the work now because you're dealing with fur and multiple layers and deep did you use pg bokeh for shallow depth of field and all uh that? yeah we we use pg bokeh usually yes okay cool. in, in this case yeah well i'm just thinking of the poor soul in, in india that had to like clean plate all these people out i mean did they just shoot a blank uh, a blank uh second um, run on I, set without nobody there yeah okay I, I hope so for them <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know because sometimes uh, um, they they use um, they just keep the reflection on the ground uh, from the the actors. So sometimes it was really it was crazy. Sometimes I was saying, "Oh my God, how they did it!" So I, how they cleaned up? Uh, I mean, thirty people. I guess of course they had something a clean up uh, from the set because. Otherwise, it was impossible. I would be surprised <laughs> if somebody didn't shoot him some uh, empty plate shots of each, like, dolly shot, and then say, okay, stitch this in, because there, there's not enough data there to clean it out. <laughs> I mean, you could... I don't, I don't know. Exactly. You could do a, a temporal no, frame no hold and patch it all together, so, but... Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty wild, my friend. I just had to take a look at that. I mean, I, whatever you might have to say about cats, it's a, it was a C, uh, compositing wise and CG wise, it was a pretty incredible achievement, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't want to attack this movie like uh, you know everyone, but it was really crazy for us. So. I mean, work on it at least. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, this one, um, I mean, I did just the grass, uh, the grass patch. The other part uh, of the, the shot uh, was uh, from Ernest. Maybe you did, yeah, you did the interview with him. So it was just at the beginning was, I guess, my first shot in, in Trickster as a compositor. Uh, 
so they gave me basically to do the, the patch of the grass uh, because the image was really you know, was not so large and they have, we have to multiply of course the the grass to extend uh, to do the the extension the zoom out basically mm -hmm. yeah it's really nice really clean also this one i did i remember the rotos uh, for the helmet because the helmet the, the glass was in uh, cg and also ernesto did uh, all the other parts all the other elements of the shot and um, I noticed the uh, the reusing here of this sort of anamorphic little uh, yeah. horizontal <laughs> here flare. Like I'm seeing it in here, and then I'm seeing it up here. <laughs> yeah, there exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, is I it... guess uh, uh, I don't know exactly, but yeah, the director really liked <laughs> the the flare in this case. Is that? Did they ever? Is that some kind of like motif or something where they're like, hey? Throw one of the anamorphics in the top right. It always looks really nice, you know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know exactly, but oh, okay. it's nice. It's a nice composition. It kind of like balances. Um, yeah, in this case, I did ev everything. So this one was my first real shot as compositor. This one, it's really. I mean, it's not something so complicated. So it was a uh, blue screen, and but yeah, it was my first shot. So we flare and everything. So I was so. Uh, so proud of me. That's nice. <laughs> More cats. More cats. A dog. Uh, this is, yeah, um, was an Italian project, um, co-production with um, some French uh, studios. Um, I did, this one was my first project um, um, as a compositor. Uh, this is Guns Akimbo. It's a nice movie. Uh, this is a German movie with the kangaroo, and this is my shot that I did during the, my my master in CG with other two other two people. Uh, the the whale. <laughs> this is the Turin uh, Square. This one. What's your opinion this. of uh like how was how was it when you had your masters compared to when you had your undergrad? What did you find? What did you find? Like, was it mostly like a time to experiment and so forth, or? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I would say it's really a good time to experiment to to learn something. Yeah, it, you, absolutely. You have more time compared when when you work or when you uh, have overtime. So uh, I would say just uh, express yourself in every way during your master when you study, because uh, after that you have. Of course, less time when you have to work, you are tired, you have everything. So, uh, yeah, it, it's good. I'm, uh, I'm assuming yeah. you've got a, a spherical. Did you? How did you do the sky here? Was it like a projection onto a sphere? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. It was a projection in a sphere, really big sphere. Was um, yeah, everything was done in nuke, in this case. And but it was a nice shot in this one. I remember we did uh, everything, and yeah, for for the master was the final final exam. And of course we recreated all the buildings, uh, so we could cast all the shadows, uh, reflection, and everything uh, on it. Then you have a little impact here, which is nice. Uh, yeah, a little bit it was just a test in Houdini. <laughs> a little Houdini sim. <laughs> yeah, it's really small. <laughs> uh -huh. And this is the spider. Uh, this oh, shot spider. is a little bit uh, longer. Uh, usually, by just I cut it out uh, yeah. the final edit. Um, yeah, I did uh, at the beginning of the shot. It's not in this reel, but in the other one, uh, I did some crowd simulation with a lot of spider from just coming out uh, from the hole. And in this case, yeah, I did this project with another guy, Dario. Uh, and yeah, we did, I did, I guess, yeah, rig, uh, walk animation of the small spider, shooting, comp, and he did uh, the, the spider, the groom, uh, the animation of the big spider and everything. I mean, I guess, yeah, when you study, you, of course, even even later, but when you study, you have time to, to do this kind of shot, so you I mean with other people, and it's really nice. You have more time, of course. 
I know, I'm just saying because I'm getting my uh, getting my master's now at Purdue University, and it's a it's a research school mm. where they have all these like they got nanotech here. They got I mean they got an we got an airport above our head, so there's planes flying over. us. It's literally like a it's <laughs> it's like a it's sort of like a uh, experimental uh, wonderland, I should say. And we're doing uh, augmented reality research. So <laughs> one of my classes we're gonna do the animation in augmented reality so instead of an animation in uh nice yeah it's, it's instead of animation like in vr we're like we could do it in vr but why not do it in ar you know because oh, we yeah, have the right. technology here i'm like uh, we can map a room out and that room will have the animation so huh. it's like let's try something you know I, that's what i like about it, is just like just go ballistic and the teachers are 100 percent behind us just saying like yeah do it you know i mean it's good to be at an institution that has the money to, to you know, f have the technology to really, you know, try new things and all that. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, but yeah, yeah I'm ha but I, getting a master's, I'm, I'm learning is like just the time to really uh, go crazy, you know. <laughs> There's also <laughs> yeah. that, that thesis. Yeah, right. Did you did you have to do the thesis too or? Uh, no, no, no. No? Uh, How'd you get out of that? What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe oh, it's yeah. because I'm getting an uh, I'm getting a uh, a science degree. It's a master MS degree, so it's not oh, a, okay. it's not it's not an MF uh, like a, a MA degree or something or whatever it is. But anyway, but anyway uh, let's uh, let's switch cameras if you don't mind onto your side and uh, uh -huh. yeah sure. Andrea is going to show us um, some of his plugins. We kind of built a little mini script to kind of go over some of his stuff, uh, and he kind of tailored it. So that'll be available for you guys to download off uh, my channel or off my website for free. Uh, so you guys can go grab that and look at it. And you reference everything according to the root structure. So you don't have to re-plug in any of the texture files or nothing. It just, <laughs> it'll just show up and reference from, the, from where this nuke script is. So, All right, so here we are. And this is the script, uh, jam-packed of goodies. So I'll, I'll uh, hand it over to Andrea here. Yep. Okay. So um, what I did with this um, expression collection was basically um, to kind of uh, yeah collect uh, all the um, everything that I um, I mean basically found about the expression uh, node. Um, so I, I tried just to put the, the link uh, from uh, where every expression comes from. And uh, I mean, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Tony and all the Trickster team, uh, Alexei, Ernest, Helge, for, of course, they teach me a lot of things. We did a lot of workshop, uh, not just about the expression, but I mean, about everything. So, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, if you don't know, there are different types of uh, the expression, the basic one is this one, then there is the expression, uh, the particle expression is this one, and then there is the deep uh, expression. Everyone uh, of this node uses expression. We are gonna just to focus on the first one for now. So what you have uh, in in this expression node, you have two parts. Basically, the first one is just uh, for the declaration of the variables. Here, we can just put the name of the variable, for example, var, and here, just the value, one. And the second part of this node is divided by channels. In this case, we have just the R, G, B, just the R, uh, G green uh, uh, layer and blue one, and the last one is for the alpha channel. So this is just a first um, example. We we just start from this image, uh, the color bar, and we connect uh, this one. We have this result because uh, what it does, basically, we are gonna shift the green channel in the red one. So we are gonna say now the red channel becomes the green one and the green one becomes the red and the blue becomes the um, the blue becomes the red so uh, turn off this one we will get this result okay you you can try it slowly on your script um, and for the uh, alpha channel we have just 
a quick gradient from zero to one because this node basically uh, runs your your image every single pixel of your image so we are gonna say the x is basically the position of every single pixel of your image divided by the width of your image so in this case 2048 so basically the first pixel is zero so uh, his value should be around zero so should be zero in theory if we check the alpha uh, value is zero and if we check uh, this pixel is uh, should be one the last one because 248 divided by itself uh, is one hmm. so the the second example here what we do basically we are gonna say we are gonna just uh, shift our red channel by 10 pixel on the um, from left to right so in this case the red channel is gonna be just on the um, it's like a translation basically so we are gonna say every single pixel in the X uh, uh, axis just put 10 uh, 100 more so in this case so basically the first pixel here in the original image is gonna be here this pixel is gonna be here and so on. So it's just a basically a shift. Here a little bit more. So we are gonna start to declarate a variable. Uh, you can declarate any kind of variable. I mean, uh, in any kind of name, there are some default variables that I don't know if you can't, uh, but in theory, you shouldn't use. For example, uh, Nuke uses as default RGB and of course A, um, for the usually for the red, the green, blue, and alpha, x and y for the position, width, height, frame, for example, for the number of frame, and this one, these are the coordinates. Uh, I mean, after um, let's see what it, what they do. So, for example, here we are going I just turn it off. We are going to declare a variable. The name is var, and uh, um, I mean the, the the value let's say is uh, y divided by height and we're gonna put it on the bar uh, on the red channel this bar so just the red channel is gonna change and basically is a gradient is like uh, the the previous gradient but in this case is vertical uh, I mean in some minutes we we will see it. and in this case uh, we are going to declare some variables uh, bar one uh, till four, but here, as you can see, we use uh, variable five because you can also, as uh, in any other um, new script, you can create a new knobs just with the usually with the uh, manage user knobs, and here you can add uh, a new knobs. So in this case, a uh, floating point, for example, uh, and here you can see there is a user tab. And changing this value is gonna change also the image, as you can see. So variable, uh, yeah, bar five is here. And we're gonna do the multiplication with the green channel. So basically, that's it. Um, there is a good aspect of this node, a good uh, pro and cons of this node. The good one is, uh, for example, if I change this variable, I put uh, variable number six. Uh, that is not declarated, our green channel is going to be off. So as you can see, uh, I mean, is off only. We have only the original image. Uh, so we we won't get any kind of error in this case. So it's good because our script will run in any case. Uh, the bad part, of course, is that we, we don't know exactly where is the error. So we have to uh, find it out. So let's put it five as before. Um, okay, sorry, I don't want to go too much deep and being too much annoying. So with mm. these technical things, so uh, just no, stop me before. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, so uh, let's start from the. It's kind of stuff. It's kind of stuff that we're too lazy to learn, but we need to learn. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, 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 they are basically the the basics of these notes. So. Mm -hmm. 
but you should know it, I mean, to, to do something with this node. And just, um, just FYI, these nodes you're looking at were pulled from the Nuke Survival Toolkit under the Expressions tab, and th those okay. are all uh, 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 Andrea's uh, okay. nodes that he's posted up, so. <laughs> so basically now we are gonna just uh, scroll down all these, uh, um, I mean, here, the Expression node, and we start from the creation till the 3D and deep. So we start from the basics. So the gradient, we saw it before. We can create a, basically a gradient, horizontal, uh, also inverted. So from one to zero is basically one minus uh, uh, the previous expression. And of course, also vertical. In this case, it's gonna be uh, Y divided the height, of course, of the image. Also in this case is inverted. And we can create uh, something really cool that I guess also mm, Tony used. It's uh, the gradient corner, uh, or I don't remember, I saw it mm, some, somewhere in the net. Uh, so here what we have, uh, we have a color of every corner. As you can see, we can go in the user tab and just modify, for example, this color we can do something green here, or I don't know, changing the value there, and you see the result. Um, what I would say, I mean, this is something really uh, annoying to learn. So for example, this string is really long, and you will see a lot of examples like that. So I would say, what I would recommend is to copy this and paste it outside of Nuke, or I don't know, in your, uh, script editor here so you you can indent uh, everything so for example here you can go down uh, something like that so you you could read it uh, I mean in a easier way I would say uh, this is really good because in this case you can learn the expression in in a good way and in this case it's impossible to read it okay now, so now if you don't mind I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of come at you here mm -hmm. um, when you're in production, when do you use those uh, five or six nodes we just went over? Like, when do you find like, oh, I need that right now? Like, what? Oh, could you give like uh, an example in a movie you worked on where you're like, you know? Oh, uh, in this case, the the gradient. Um, I mean, you you can use them, uh, for example, for creating. You know, instead of the classic uh, ramp. Um, so it, it's like that. Oh, Usually. so instead of like you, having to build that, yeah, and exactly. you're like, I mean, you you okay. can do something like that. Of course, you you can evolve this uh, basic uh, gradient. So, for example, you can translate it, or you can do whatever you want. But it's good, for example, if you have I don't know a light coming from uh, uh, up to down of your image, or you want just to mask something. I mean, in a smooth way, you can also put. Uh, blur after that and just uh, smooth a little bit more um, can, can be useful in, in this way I mean let, let's say this is something I guess is good uh, I created also this collection because in this case you can learn a new expression it's not that mm, okay this is good uh, to use uh, uh, immediately in a movie in your shot but it's good to learn this expression oh, okay I can use this expression with this other one and create something more complex. I guess, uh, the, I mean, I would say the this tutorial or in general is good for that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, after that, gotcha. there are some examples, some maybe practical example that you, you can do. Um, the random expression. So this is uh, an expression course is uh, um, random so it creates uh, a custom uh, random values uh, I'm gonna just put uh, a checkerboard so what it does uh, it uh, takes uh, the RGB and alpha channel and for every channel it does a random value so just turn it off if we are here we have uh, 0 0.5 for this uh, every value and put in this node, we have 0.68 for uh, RGB. If we put here plus 10, just the green channel is going to change. If we put here plus, I don't know, 90, 
is going to change just the blue channel. So uh, we can get a random value, for example, for we, we can use this expression in any case for colors, for, uh, you know, your curve editor. You can use it uh, if you need some random values sometimes uh, to animate. I don't know, could be uh, this one, could be your, your gain. You can put here the random and do something with this expression. Um, also, I've created something um, more practical. You you can use just the random without the um, I mean the RGB the, the argument basically, and you can create a random value for every single pixel. As I said before, uh, the expression node works uh, in every pixel of your image. So here, if you try to change your frame you will see uh, always this random channel, uh, random value. Here, random every frame. What does it mean? Uh, we are going to put the frame in the argument, and for every single pixel and for every single frame, we will get a random value. So if I'm going to change my frame, you see, it's a... Uh, and that's, that's, <laughs> some, that's, any, that's any range between zero and one. Both for um, red, green, and blue, right? Yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, I guess uh, you you will get a random value between yeah zero and one. You can get, uh, of course, just multiplying this. Uh, I don't know for one thousand. Oh, there you go. You, yeah. you will get uh, a crazy value. So you you can use uh, this normalized value in an easy way to if you want, you know, to, to do something exponential or whatever you want. And yeah, it's good in, in this case. Now, when in production, can you give an example of when you've had to use that on a shot for something? Um, yeah, for the random value, I don't know. If you want to do, for example, you, you can use it, uh, I would say, instead of the deter. Usually, uh, the deter basically, if you connect it to a checkerboard, it does basically the same. For example, it's a kind of uh, no. random uh, grain, I would say. Um, I don't know exactly, um, but it creates basically the same. Um, you can reduce the amount. So I use this one uh, usually when you lose some details and you wanna. You it's not the grain. It's not a uh, you know. I use this or grain. No. Uh, I use this one in a really really low value. For example, zero point zero one just to get, you know, some details, something to the image, because otherwise it uh, should be really flat. And if you watch it, of course, uh, just in this way, you see it's really bad. But if you zoom out, you see there, are, there is something instead of uh, flat color. So now, are you t are you talking in reference to like I did a paint job and I did too much colon exactly. work here? Exactly. There's no detail. I'm not regraining the shot, but I need detail. Yeah, after that you gotcha. you have of course to regrain it, but you need something. You need some dirty dirty stuff, especially when you you know when you paint something. Uh, usually you use uh, I don't know too much clone, too much smear, for example and uh, the image is really flat, there, there's nothing in your image. Uh, and you, you can add some details in, in this way, of course, with the, I don't know, usually... So I, you, you I can't use... always cover your tracks with a regrain if you've lost detail through a lot of smearing and, and cloning at half transparencies or opacities. You need to add what's called detail there and... Yeah, this, this is not... I don't want to say details because it's, it's nothing. It's just a random colors, random pixel. But you, you, you get something. You get something dirty. Uh, you, especially, yeah, in this case, uh, when you have something blurred, something flat. For example, if you take this image, you, you can just have, I don't know, a crazy value of blur. You see, the image is flat. But in this case, um, you can get something uh something fake of course uh, but it's not uh, um a substitute of the the grain of course after everything you have to restore your grain of the original plate but in this case it's just something because yeah, most really, people really most people would just be like oh that's rather flat oh regrain will take care of it 
No, 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 absolutely no. <laughs> I'm playing the devil's advocate here, so everybody kind of gets an idea, you know, as far as like, you know, I, I, this is yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry for like, you know, throwing stuff at you, like a tennis match, but every time I see these nodes, I'm like, when do you use this in reality? You know what I mean? No, exactly. I mean, there are so many nodes that you, you don't know, know exactly. Yeah. You have to use it in your script. This is the, I mean, the most important thing when I use it. And yeah, I mean, it's good to, to have this kind of question. So yeah, I mean, thank you. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Like, when would you use it? Because <laughs> we'll be looking at things and going, okay, I see noise. What's the purpose of that? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. It's, yeah, know. exactly. Um. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I try to, to, to get more examples about that. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, we're getting to that uh, good stuff. I mean, it's good uh, stuff. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, here I just put uh, a link that you can grab all these um, mathematical uh, functions. So, for example, uh, the, um, here, the random expression, the noise, uh, and different types uh, noise turbulence and everything you you can grab it from here so there are uh, I don't know maybe 100 uh, um, function that you you can use uh, what are the what are the tall if you're like a tech checker what are the ta uh, tall tale signs that somebody got lazy and didn't add any detail to a cloned area and they just threw grain over it like are you gonna see that like mm. How how does somebody spot that and go? Oh, this lazy bum just threw grain oh. over something, you know? Yeah, I mean, you, usually when I um, I remember when I was doing the the prep for someone, uh, usually I was exporting um, the regrain plate and the plate without the grain. So the comp after that, the comper after that could check uh, actually. The, the plate without the grain, so without, uh, you know, anything on top. Um, and this is good. I would say, I mean, you, you need to check it before the grain, uh, if there are some mistakes on, or, or something on the image is too flat. Um, but yeah, in, I guess this is just a uh, supervisor <laughs> work. So um, they, they can check it and they can say, Okay, you, you need to add something. You I need more details, and you you can grab it. For example, some details uh, from uh, uh, I mean the, the the image. If there are some details, uh, um, I mean uh, in, in really close to your patch, you you can grab it from there in some way. So yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know. I mean I. I what I was doing prep, I was trying to uh, to be really clean and, of course, to to get something really cool to the to the compositor. I mean, and so they can say, okay, I like it, or no, you have to work uh, a little bit more. Um, so the noise expression, it's a kind of uh, expression. Yeah, it, it's the expression with the noise. So basically. Here, you, you will get, uh, uh, just uh, giving an image as an input, you can see, uh, I'm gonna, okay, this is our image, and we are gonna do use the noise uh, um, expression. So here we have a value of 100, we are gonna just go a little bit lower with 50. Um, we will get this example. Uh, also in the alpha channel, we mm, I, I did something a little bit uh, more complex. So I tried to put together in the same argument of the noise uh, all the previous uh, channels. So red, green, and blue here all together in a using the the previous expression random. So here you will get this result, for example. Of course, you, you can play in, in this way. So here you can put the plus 10, and as you can see, it will show a totally different result. So you, you can just play uh, with this kind of node, try to understand something more. 
here the uh, expression uh, FBM basically is the same expression here the noise the oh, noise uh, noise node you have two types of uh, noise FBM and turbulence um, and here as you can see you have the FBM expression what it does um, it's using uh, here I'm gonna create another channel it called uh, noise uh, zero one, and we, if we check here, we see noise zero one. It does uh, this image. Uh, uh, you, we can move also the offset a little bit here in the user tab, and in the final FPM expression, we go back to the RGBA we have uh, this result. So basically it's something, um, I don't know exactly every single argument of this node, that it, uh, of this expression, but basically it takes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six arguments, uh, this expression. Uh, you, you can check every single argument, what it does, what it means uh, here at this link. So I don't want to go to I mean, it's a little bit complex, and I'm, gotcha. I'm not so specific uh, about this uh, <laughs> this expression. And more or less, it's the same with the turbulence one. So I'm gonna create a, a noise uh, channel for the lacunarity, and here for the turbulence is basically the same. Here we we have uh, again six arguments. We can change the octave, uh, for example, four we can change the gain, 10, and so on. So we, we can also play with this expression. And this is the noise. Lines, okay, this is something, um, okay, you can say, uh, yeah, uh, I don't need anything of this. So what it does, this node, this uh, uh, creates uh, lines. You can change the thickness, uh, three, okay, it's too much, 0 0.1. You can change the white uh, shoe, and this is the expression. Uh, it's the same uh, vertical lines, horizontal lines. Uh, so basically, the vertical uses the scene expression, and the horizontal the cosine. I don't know in English is cosine. Uh, so could but, you give an example of any time yeah, in your exactly. compositing history that you've used this Absolutely. on a specific shot? The, the cool one is this one, I would say, the animated one. Oh, wow. So I, I try to do an example. It's really bad. The result. Oh, there we go. I mean, try to just <laughs> understand. <laughs> this is a still image, so it's just a lake. Um, I'm gonna do this one. So I've created just the animated lines horizontally. I add a little bit of fractal blur. So just to create, you know, a little bit of noise, fractal, something. I'm gonna mask it just, uh, of course, where uh, the water is. You can use it, I don't know, with a night transform, uh, ID distort, whatever you want, STMAP, you can convert it in R uh, and G channel. And you can use it just to distort a little bit your still image. F. If we try to play, it's a little bit heavy, this, uh, the fractal blur and everything. Uh, and my computer is slow but uh, you will get a kind of uh, sensation of the movement. Uh, I want to just to remember that this is a still image, but you have the sensation, just the feeling, then the water actually is moving. Of oh. course, this is just an example. But um, I remember I used this node uh, in my last week at work uh, just to create a kind of example because I did uh, a prep uh, on the water. And to have this uh, kind of movement, this kind of feeling, this note is really, really good. Um, and yeah, this is just an example. Okay, you, we are not using directly this node on top of the image, but we are using it as a mask to, uh, so just as an input for this I transform. And I, yeah, I guess this is good. Okay, we, we can get uh, the same result in other, I don't know, 2,000 solutions. 
But, yeah, that's that's an awesome example right there. Kind of I mean, gives people an idea. This like, is, yeah, exactly. This is fast, uh, and I mean, it's just uh, yeah, I did it in one minute. So just work on it. Uh, it's, uh, you can get something. And the same one is uh, is is the same for all the other nodes. So for example, here we have circles. Uh, it creates uh, circles coming from this corner here of the image. And this is uh, the expression. It's a little bit, I mean, complex. There is some math. There is the uh, square. I don't know how to say it in English. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there is this expression, the scene. And of course, uh, using it uh, with, uh, in a, um, I mean, custom way, we have the center. We can move the center of our circle. Uh, sorry. We have uh, the size, so if, uh, for example, is the like the previous example, let's say we can animate the size, so we can get this result. So the circle are coming close to the camera or are, you know, expanding. And you can use it, uh, you know, with fractal blur, some noise, um, I mean, in, with other notes, just to, to get something. So you're, you're basically, this, this is the type of stuff, once it's sort of uh, broken up with, you know, different noise patterns can be used to yeah, drive exactly. blurs and eye distorts and kind of just do a trippy distortion on the footage, basically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's something really, really, that this result, okay, it's nothing. Is uh, There are just some circles. But you can use it to drive another node as a mask, uh, as uh, I don't know, yeah, as team up, uh, or whatever. Uh, yeah, this is basically the um, the final result, and it's the same for the radials. The radials is this one, and okay, let's see. This one is the radial gradient. So basically, it's like you know the normal uh, radial of nuke. You can change the center, you can change the size, the gradient. So in this case, uh, you, you can understand actually how mathematically, of course, how the classic radial node works. Maybe you, you don't care, maybe it's too hard, it's too complicated, but at least here you have all the expression, you have everything here. And I mean, just, if you want to spend some time, you know, to understand, uh, and you can, you know, something so more. So would you use that to mask, say, an anamorphic lens flare or something? Yeah, or... I exactly. Guess. Also, also this one is really cool, the radial rays. So here, again, we have this one. We have the size. So we can, uh, uh, you know, go up with the size, 10, 20. And animating this uh, everything, you can get, you know, animating this one, the offset, you can get a kind of kyloidoscopic uh, result. And um, yeah, basically, <laughs> the, this is it. We did, I remember, we did everything here in our workshop at Trickster once. And it was really, really nice, it was really, really interesting. And yeah, the the final goal was not, of course, to understand everything just the first time because really it's complex for everyone, every every person. I mean, it's hard to understand everything. But if you try just to split uh, this extent, this expression. So, for example, before I learn this one, what it does, then uh, I try to understand uh, this other part uh, on top, on top, on top. Uh, uh, you can just finish with all the expression. So, yeah, that's it. Um, another thing here, we have the points. What you can do, basically, let's start here. So this is small. Uh, you cannot see it very well, but what it does, this expression creates some points. With a delay, you can just watch it a little bit better. So here we are creating some points just with uh, um, an offset, as you can see. 
We can just control the offset. We can control, let's go back to 200. We can control the colors, random colors, um, and that's it. Uh, we are using here the Convolve, uh, the Convolve uh, node. I didn't know about this. Um, I mean, I, I was using this node usually for the defocus to simulate, you know, the, the flare of the defocus. So what it does basically with an input of your image and a filter. In this case, our filter is uh, this flare here. We have this flare with the crop. So uh, this is our flare. It's an hexagon. We can change it here, the number of the corner. So we can get a pentagon, uh, a square, triangle and that's it and what it does basically it's um, driving every single point of our image we are going to drive every single point with this flare so every single point will become uh, our hexagon if we change here the number of corners let's see you see square triangle and we can create a kind of you know the um, holograms, uh, uh, this kind of walls uh, that we have usually with the, for the holograms. Uh, here you can maybe understand a little bit better, this kind of things. So for example, we can create this kind of honey feeling, uh, you know, um, and we have our master, so we can just move the color, random point, for the colors, random every frame. So every frame, the color is gonna be random. And yeah, this is another example. This point a little bit advanced, but I mean, the, the basic is uh, the same. How you can, what you can do with this one, uh, I remember there was a compositor in, in Trickster, uh, Helge. He tried to use this one to create the, this effect on the mask, Captain Marvel. So this kind of hexagon uh, feeling on the mask, because the mask was, was kind of hologram. So he used this technique uh, to, to drive, uh, I mean, to, to, to get this result, the convolve, remember? So if and somebody were to watch Captain Marvel and they saw some character's mask and they saw this sort of honeycomb uh, holographic hologram yeah, form, exactly. they would say it came from this, basically. I mean, I, I don't know if at the end of the shot he used this technique, but he tried using that. I remember his explanation of the convolve and everything, so uh, I'm not the father of this technique, let's say. <laughs> I just so put it here. <laughs> and, well, it's interesting because I'm, 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 I'm used to using Substance Painter, Substance Designer, which is a procedural texturing program. And it's the same thing in a way that you're 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 making available rather simple shapes, but you use these shapes in a more yeah, exactly. expanded form down exactly. the pipe. You know, I mean, because this is nothing. This is just you know hexagon. Uh, you you cannot use it like this, but of course in this way or I don't know, yeah, whatever. You you can do something more complex, more usable in uh, in, in comp, and you can do everything in comp without uh, you know any other department annoying any other department in this case. Yeah, I mean uh, not, not not everything comes from the renders. No, right? no, no so, I mean there's a point where the three D people look at you and say, "Figure it out, make a hologram, <laughs> make a honeycomb hologram," you know, and you and you're like, "I'm not going to render that out in three D. You you figure it out," you know. And then there's that kind of like, there's that divider line between what gets taken care of in comp and what gets taken care of 3D. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. I mean, um, I remember watching, in, in this case, Elge working or any other compositor, Bine, Tony, Alexei. It, it's really nice, I mean, to, to see how they figure it out, uh, all this kind of stuff, uh, all the knowledge that they have, uh, they. I mean, it's really nice to see them working in this case because, okay, you, you can say, okay, I have no solution. No, they don't. They, they try, they have, you know, they are super, super senior compare and they try a, a way to get out of it. And I mean, it's interesting working with this kind of people. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, um, I mean, connected to the the point, I try to create, let's say, a kind of um, procedural texture, so a kind of tool. Um, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to go too much deeper with this node, node. so basically, uh, was a node uh, for the procedural texture. Um, I didn't share it yet because it's too much complex, uh, there are too much stuff that you need to uh, tweak uh, and everything, but what I did is this one. Uh, so basically this is a texture uh, done uh, with this technique uh, in, in that way that I already explained. Everything is done in Nuke. As you can see here the edges uh, are not perfect, but I mean it's fine, I just wanted to do something, uh, how it works. So basically here we start uh, from nothing. And it's a kind of uh, layer on top, on top, on top. So we do something, we put something on top, created with uh, that technique, and that's it basically. So this is just an example. For example, uh, if we have to create a texture or something, we, we can do it, of course, in Photoshop, uh, any other software, but you can do it in Nuke really, really quickly also. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so connected to that one about texture, we have also the bricks. Uh, let's start from here. This is the classic STMAP. Uh, and here we are gonna just basically, you know, to mm, distort an image with our STMAP, we put just a, a corner pin. This is our source, and this is the result after the STMAP. Here, we are going to create a brick, a wall of our STMAP. We can control the size of it, the offset, the scale, and of course the width of the bricks, so just moving down, that's it. So we can create our wall. Put it in with the STMAP, we can get this result, for example. Okay, this is something stupid because the color wheel, uh, you won't get the, the but you, you get the idea what you can do. Yeah, so you yeah. can create a real wall, just put it here, just a texture. And you know what, what keeps coming to mind is like, as you were talking about before, like hologram, half transparent, real subtle effects that you might see in a movie that are just there for two seconds, but you have the ability to use the ST map and map these sort of textures on there and have them yeah. you know, throw a glow on there. And then you got, a, a, cause I think, isn't that a lot what goes into comp is they leave the holographic semi-transparent stuff to the to the comp as opposed to the 3D? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Uh, I'm not sure in if it's like this in every movie, but yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, but yeah, for example, this is, mm, I mean, here, of course, uh, animating all these values, you you can get something really, really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, everything is here in this node, so you, you can change the type, the bricks, uh, the lines, uh, the tile, uh, uh, so everything is here inside this node. Uh, the trunk, uh, here, uh, this expression is the trunk, so what it does basically is the trunk every single value. So here we start from our color wheel, of course uh, we have, uh, um, I don't know how many millions of colors, but here we have only three colors, so the red channel is going to be trunk, just uh, is uh, zero or one, in this case is one. Uh, the, it's the same for the green and for the blue. Here we have our uh, scale, so let's try to put two. Uh, what it means here we have two different values for the red, for the green, uh, for the blue. Three, four, so we, we can create just a uh, scale um, of uh, every single uh, uh, layer, so red, green, uh, blue. So we can create this kind of effects, uh, I don't know, uh, all the old TV, all the Mm, just trunk uh, the mm, with this expression trunk uh, every every channel. Uh, 
Um, I don't know actually how to use these, but it was, was something cool. So, <laughs> I mean, it could be something in regards to, I mean, you're getting this intentional banding, which can be stylistic to yeah, animation yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. We can try to put just the image. Let's see. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's something strange. I wonder but... if this lady ever sees herself in all these compositing <laughs> things, you know, she, she's always in every... <laughs> <laughs> the most famous girl. Yeah, she's like a famous comp lady, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Here yeah, is just to to get the the idea of this node. So um, I don't know. Um, okay, so now let's start with the alpha channel. Is another topic. So this is uh, alpha binary. Um, is uh, if color then alpha. So what it does here we have our input image is this one. We do a really really easy uh, key light and this is our alpha our mat. Um, what it does basically uh, it's gonna compare if R or this is uh, or B or G is uh, uh, different from zero. So is uh, is more than zero, then put one. So basically, let's see now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, yeah. I have to switch in the alpha. Okay. Now you see. So uh, every pixel in the uh, RGB that is different from zero is gonna be one in the alpha. So the alpha is gonna be or zero or one. Um, I don't wanna. Um, show before this example because the example is going to be after but it's really good when you have to do the grain so regrain your uh, your plate in this case this expression is really useful but after that I have another group I, I put everything in a, in a gizmo so to to compare uh, to get a little bit better this example I have mm, a simple noise and here we are going to compare the alpha. So the alpha comparison. If alpha is less than this number that we put here, in this case is 0.1, then just show the the, um, the value. So show R, G, B, A, or put zero. So in this case, only what we see now in the image is less than 0.1. So if we are going to try 0 0.5, it means that everything here is 0 0.5 or less. What is it? Uh, what is in here is totally black. It means that uh, in, is in the range between 0 0.5 and 1. So it's uh, n nothing special, nothing complex. Sort of like an inverse crushing of blacks and whites, but instead yeah. of like, yeah. Yeah, kind of. I mean, in, yeah, in this topic is everything about comparison and yeah, <laughs> between this range. It's good when you work with, you know, with the alpha. Um, and here, so it's uh, always something easy. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's not um, about uh, here, this expression you see is, uh, is empty. You, you go here, is zero if the alpha channel doesn't exist. One if alpha channel exists. So here we have a constant. Our constant is uh, totally white, is uh, RGBA. And our value here is one. If we try to remove uh, the alpha channel, let's put it here and I go to the alpha. So you see, our value is gonna change. So it's zero. It means in this case that uh, our uh, alpha channel is zero, doesn't exist uh, because I, I remove it completely here with this node. I don't know, can be useful in this case um, uh, when you have to check if I have an alpha, for example, you have your plate uh, as an input. Uh, I, I need to do some operation on the alpha, but before I need to check if the alpha actually exists or not. So can be good in this case. So what you have to do to check it is just uh, remove or not the this node, and this value will change. If we go here, we see our expression is in TCL, 
uh, nothing special. So if the alpha channel exists, uh, put one, if not, zero. That's it. Um, why, why you should use the expression node instead of other nodes? Because uh, you, you can save a lot of space, a lot of um, nodes, basically. What we have to do is basically a plus between uh, red, green, and blue. So what we do is basically here, we shuffle everything in the red, green, and blue, and we plus every single, everything, basically together. We used one, two, three, four, four nodes. Here, we do the same in just one node. So basically here, we just put uh, R plus B plus G, and we get the same result. So four nodes and only one node. That, that's why I guess it's really, really good to work in this case. And this is just something a, a little bit advanced. So here I used also the, um, the clamp. Uh, so we, we can also clamp, of course, our result. Maybe if the, the, the sum, the result is uh, over one, we, we need to clamp it out. So just we can tweak this one, and this is the expression. So everything is here. And yeah, the absolute value. So this is something good. For example, when you uh, you can use this technique when you uh, have to. I I I try to use this one, but I use it not so often. When you need to uh, degrain plate, usually. In the plate, you have some negative values, uh, some some pixel negative. So you can convert it in the um, in the relative uh, positive value. So what it does, we have just a constant. Everything, every value is one. We put a multiply of minus four, and we will get. You see the image. Everything is minus four. What it does, the absolute uh, expression converts everything in positive. So minus becomes positive, uh, minus four becomes plus four, and so on. So um, it, it's really easy. So minus seven is seven, and that's it. So if you have, let's say, minus 0 0.001, you can convert it in plus one uh, zero zero one. Um, so you don't have uh, this kind of problems with the negative values. Um, you, you can also use this expression, um, I mean, a similar comparison to um, just to check if you have negative pixel in your image. Here we have an image, we just put a noise, and here we, we will get some negative uh, pixels. We use this expression, is uh, the, the comparison uh, that we saw before. Uh, so all the negative values becomes uh, 1000. And these are our negative values uh, with a small blur just to increase, uh, you know, the, mm, I mean, just delete the pixel. When, when do you uh, bump into these negative values? Is that Alexa footage in some sort of a color space uh, exchange? Uh, yeah. Or? Yeah, exactly. When you change color space, uh, usually, yeah, when you have to change color space. Uh, I mean, sometimes uh, you you need uh, to keep uh, these negative values at the end because you need, I don't know, you just uh, send your plate in EXR without any other conversion to the, um, you know, to the client. So you, you need some color, some negative values at the end. It, it depends. Um, but it's good when you have to do your final check to use this technique, for example, just to say, okay, we have these uh, uh, negative values and it's the same in the original plate. Or for example, I have all the image, my, uh, my image is negative, so maybe there's something wrong. Um, so it, it's some sort of tech check, uh, final tech check that you can, you, you can do. How um, often do you do those kind of checks? Uh, I mean, footage. usually I, um, at the end of my script, uh, I use this one. I created basically. Oh, tech check. There you go. Yeah, this tech check. 
So basically, uh, what it does, it does. Uh, uh, let, let's grab just a plate. Oh wow, that that's pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty robust. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but I mean, sometimes you you need to do it just at the end. Uh, it's just a mirror, just to flip your image and watch it in another perspective, another way. And this is good, for example, for when when you do prep, because we are used to watch it in this way. But if you change perspective, it's gonna be it's gonna be another, I mean, <laughs> another shot totally. Um, so yeah, the mirror checking saturation. So you just go up with the saturation really, really up. Um, usually, yeah, you you can just convert it in log space. Uh, you can you you sh you have to check, of course, your white. Uh, I mean, without changing this one, in Nuke, you can just go up and down with this. It's just basically a gain. Uh, uh, yeah, again, up and down. It's the same for the blacks. So for the blacks, uh, we go up with the gain. Are and you basically course, just looking for any uh, separation of the of the elements as you're doing that? Yeah, you're going, exactly. Ah, crap, I didn't color grade correctly. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. You, it's something that, that you do visually. It's not something tech, mm -hmm. technique in this case. But um, about technique, uh, these three things. So, for example, here you have the non pixel, here you have your infinity pixel, and here the negative. And of course, if there are some, um, I mean, you, you don't have to, to have some non pixel or infinity now or how do, like how that. do nan how do nan uh pixels get in there I and mean, we were talking about negative pixels but yeah exactly. i know there's a lot of nan pixels in the black magic camera that thing's all full of problems um yeah. but uh when uh, do you see yeah. how does how, how do you i know you've got part of your script where you build you can actually create a nan pixel but yeah, where do exactly. nan pixels yeah. come from um, I don't know exactly in, uh, in your image where they come from, uh, probably some other user, they, they know really much better than me. Um, I just know how to solve them. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know where they but... come from, but I know how to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, here basically I, I just tried to uh, create them. So it's just one pixel. Uh, I used the delete, so if we check the result, here, yeah. After this one, we have the non pixel, as you can see. Here, I just did something stupid, so I don't remember. It's the square of minus one, and of course, uh, um, the the final result is an error. Instead of error, it, it gets none. Uh, how to kill it? So there are different ways to kill it. Uh, I use the classic uh, offset. So I take the pixel on the left, on the right, up and down, and move it here. So of course, usually you have just one pixel uh, negative, and not 10,000 uh, pixels in your image. And yeah, you, you can just uh, clone your, uh, I mean, uh, next pixel in, in, the other, in the other position. And that's it. Here you, you can... You can just check, uh, yeah, the negative to check the non-pixel. This is the expression to check the infinity pixel. This one is the expression. So that's it. Uh, and it's pretty much the same for the infinity pixel. So here we are going to create. Uh, we have an infinity pixel, infinity value, and here how we kill it. Uh, no. Do you, do you bump into nan pixels a lot, oh, okay. or not really? Uh, non pixel, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, I usually, I mean, sometimes, yeah. When you do something, or, yeah, you know, when you, when you change color space, or whatever. Oh, okay. So that's the culprit, uh, like a color space change, and all of a sudden you got an mm, pixel? Yeah, sometimes, yes. Um, okay. I don't know, right now, I don't remember something, yeah, a specific example, but yeah, usually with color spaces and, yeah, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so keying and this pill, uh, as everyone knows, uh, the expression node is really good for the this pill. Uh, of course, so here we are gonna do the example just with green and blue, where you can dispel any kind of color. So this is the classic expression. So it's just a, um, an average. So between the other channels, if 
they are less than the green channels so um, basically they, they remove the, the green uh, compared to the um, this expression so here we have different kind of um, uh, expressions and different kind of dispel they are coming from basically the dispel uh, madness if uh, we are gonna check it inside there are these expression I just put it here in a cool way <laughs> and that's it so um, I don't want to be too worrying about this this topic it's basically just a different um, different expression different uh, comparison uh, for the green channel and of course uh, for the blue channel is uh, pretty much the same uh, so basically they compare the blue or green channel with the other to uh, read the red and green and that's it um, yeah in, in your opinion in your opinion on D spill I know we we'll, we're uh, before we kind of take off from there mm -hmm. um, Obviously, like for instance, I did a commercial with Sam Jackson where he was forced to be in a 360 green screen box, basically, as they filmed them with, you know, these cranes. Uh -huh. um, you're inevitably going to get some heavy despill. How much damage does despill do to the final image? And in your opinion, is it like better to do what they're doing on like these Star Wars Mandalorian things where they're basically <laughs> just lighting the character with a stagecraft uh, light? Uh you know um leds or you know yeah um i didn't know exactly about you you know this kind of lead wall uh, digital production this kind of things so, i mean we talk about it of course uh, i know that uh I, i'm talking about the the first season of the mandalorian they had to fix some problems uh, that were becoming from the wall uh, you know uh, frame frame rate uh, this kind of stuff uh, something was flickering there was no, um, um, I mean, th they were not in, in the same uh, time with the plate, with the actor, so they had to change uh, some stuff. Um, I would say sometimes, um, I'm not sure exactly what to answer about the, this question. Um, That's fine. That's fine. I just figured I'd just throw it out there because I know each one of these nodes uh, increases the range of pulling out the color green or the color yeah. blue, and I always think, how much damage do you do as you move or move, increase that range around the the color wheel, so to speak? And is it like you know, is there a sweet spot of all of five of these that maybe one you're like, I prefer this one the most? Or mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I would say of course, uh, um, if you have uh, a lot of things. Uh, uh, you know, lights, uh, um, if the green screen is uh, is good, the illumination is good, you can just reduce uh, all the damage, uh, of course, uh, on your actor, on your foreground. Um, and, of course, if you have the interactive light from the set, it's really good. You don't have to add, to add something on top. Uh, but, yeah, I would say maybe there are some other... Um, people I mean they they know of course uh, more than me about this topic and okay. yeah, I mean I'm, I'm sorry co I'll, I'll... comparing no 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 of course I mean comparing uh, I saw the article from Steam Wright uh, about the virtual production and everything uh, how it works uh, so I guess it's really uh, something good to read um, about it I mean it, it's a new technology uh, something really good I guess uh, but of course, it's not the paradise, so there are some problems even there, and it, it's an evolution, of course. Yeah, of yeah. And, but yeah, I mean, just to end up with this topic, we, we can do also the, the keying with the, um, uh, the expression. Here we have just a really quick example. Uh, we can just have our, our alpha channel, we can pre-multiply it, and here we just put the classic dispel, the basic one, the dispel expression, merge it on top. Of course, uh, uh, I did everything just uh, with basic node without tweaking, so uh, don't, don't watch the final result, but yeah, I mean, 
um, everything you you can tweak everything, of course. It looks like a budget uh, a budget Julia Roberts there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> Another VFX star. You know. <laughs> a young Julia Roberts. This guy with the uh, wild hair. I thought this guy with the hair was Tony Lyons, actually. I was like, Tony, is that you? Like, uh, the, not the, <laughs> the one at the bottom there, the guy looking up. Ah, uh, what? Which one? This that one. That guy. Yeah. I'm like, is that you, Tony? I'm like, no, it's some other guy. <laughs> yeah, not not the in the air. Right here day. <laughs> um. Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, the difference key. This is really good. I was saying before for the mm, regrain. What it does, so basically here, imagine to have your um, original plate. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, that, yeah. You do some comp, don't watch the result, so I just did some paint. Okay, this is your comp, so you did, you modified your original plate. Uh, what it does, basically, um, it's gonna compare the differences between your comp plate and the original one. So uh, this is uh, what you change uh, in your plate. This is the math, the math of your uh, of what you change. Uh, just moving here, the tolerance you can reduce uh, the tolerance, of course, uh, of um, of everything. Inside of this, there is uh, this the merge expression. It's just uh, it's always uh, uh, the expression node, but in the merge way. So you have two inputs. Uh, and you can do an operation with, of course, input one and input B, A and B. Uh, nothing too complex. So um, what you can do here, imagine you can restore the grain of the original plate everywhere. And then here, you, you can change the grain with, I don't know, every grain, uh, uh, whatever you want. Um, only here and use this one as a mask. So for example, uh, gray, I don't know. You can just do this one. The good old cheap green. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the basic one, you can do this. Okay. Drive it by this one. I've so, noticed and, that uh, in a couple of the comps that I've been doing lately, is uh that the the blending between like you you can't just necessarily output the alpha of your roto paint node of all the paint strokes yeah uh, also. you, <clears throat> you yeah. need to adjust that alpha edge because yeah, you won't it's, see it's, that the, where there's the gradient the the actual um yeah grains won't show up so in between where you painted a new paint stroke and the original footage It'll go from grain to no grain to grain. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're forced I mean, the, to kind of crush the values, right, to push the grain in that gradient, basically, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the good part of this node, as you can see, you don't have the gradient, so it's zero or one. And you, you can get the same result, of course, with the difference node, the classic one, if you just put crazy values here in the gain. Uh, yeah, here you have always a kind of um, yeah gradient, uh, something like that. It is something that can create problems when you restore the, your, your grain. Uh, in this way, not. So you, you don't have uh, gradient and everything. You have just this tolerance. And you can change it, and you can select where actually restore it. And as you can see here, I decided just to restore the grain where I painted out, uh, where I painted everything, where I changed stuff. And, and yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, um, let's say this is good. For example, uh, depends from your techniques. There are different uh, schools. Uh, there are different techniques. Uh, um, if you work always on your denoised plate, you can just restore your original grain at the end of your script. So depends uh, what what you think. <laughs> um, yeah, just finishing this topic, uh, we have uh, we we can just do the IBK gizmo, 
with the expression node. So this is a really long, complex, uh, annoying expression. But basically here, uh, you can get the same result of your ABK gizmo here with the uh, expression node, expression merge, and that's it. Uh, you can change green, blue, um, yeah, it's something yeah, long and annoying. <laughs> Um, yeah, just uh, the new topic. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where are we? Are we all... uh, I mean, it's all sorry. great information, but it's like I know when I built this thing, it was like this long pillar. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, you, you need to, you know, put the speed uh, a little bit faster. <laughs> of the, of the video, <laughs> we're going through every expression. No, I'm kidding. No, no, I mean, sorry, but you can cut out, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, um, if you want, I can jump uh, in something, I mean, more useful. And yeah, no, that, I'd say just I mean, have, yeah, yeah, you don't have to go yeah. through every one of them, I don't think, you know. Yeah, okay. If you don't exactly. want to. Uh, uh, okay, so with this node, uh, we saw it before, we have the UV map, the good part here. We can convert the UV map in vector. Uh, with this expression. So, uh, for example, with UV map, you can drive the ST map, and with the vector, uh, you can drive, I don't know, your vector, um, uh, your vector blur, uh, vector blur, you can drive your ID stored. So there are different, it, it's the same expression, it, it's the same thing, basically, but, um, I mean, the result is the same, but in a different way. Uh, I just created, I mean, something more interested. I just created this uh, node. Uh, what it does, basically, is a paint, is a paint transform. So you can basically just paint and move stuff dynamically in your image, in live. So it's the paint node, but with the transform inside. Um, and here you can see the UV map, uh, okay, the UV map or your vector. And as, uh, okay, here for example, you see the UV map driving the ST map. Uh, so okay. the vectors would be plugged into, say, a smart vector type spiel? Uh, so basically, the, um, the vector. Yeah, here, for example, you see, uh, we are going to output the vector from the RotoPaint node, and we are going to put it in the forward channel. And this one drives uh, our ID stored. So the result is this one here, and uh, should be the same here, no why? Oh, I don't know. So basically, if you put this one here, and this is going to be this one here with the UV map, you should get, the, okay, you should get the same result, of course, if we put the same input. Okay, this one and this one is pretty, is exactly the same, but with different techniques. So this is the UV map and this is the vectors, but it's, it's exactly the same as you can see. And uh, for example, yeah, I used this technique in um, in uh, cats. For example, the roto paint, uh, the match move uh, of the arms was not perfect uh, with the wrist of the actor. So I used this technique just to move uh, in every frame the the wrist, the arm, just to to match, you know, our end. Uh, this is a good, I mean, a good example in in, in the practical way. Uh, or, for example, you, here you have, um, this is just blood, here there are four frames of blood, it's a 2D element, so what you can do here, you can move uh, something, you, you can move your blood and just painting here, you can just paint, add a little bit of smooth, and you can move it as you want, and just put it here. So for example, I don't like this one, this, I want to be, okay, just paint and move it. 
You can do the same with, I don't know, uh, the roto. So usually what you can do, I have this roto, I need to mask it, I need to uh, stencil out and then move it with the transform, then put it on top again. In this case, you can just connect the node and just paint. It's, I mean, I guess it's easier to paint instead of, I don't know, doing roto or use the I transform or whatever. So it's really immediate if you want to get something, I mean, just in one second. Um, how how heavy is that? How heavy is that node? Um, uh, it's not so heavy because it's using the UV map. So inside, basically, there is the UV map and the roto paint. Of course, uh, uh, the roto paint is not so um, easy to deal with. So sometimes uh, can be really heavy. Uh, but in this case, yeah, I guess uh, it's going to be easier instead of using, you know, roto, merge, and blah, blah. It's just one node. So with a brush stroke uh, set to full hardness, you can physically move something. Yeah, exactly. It, it's exactly a roto paint node. So yeah. uh, here you have, um, you know, you have um, everything as the roto paint. You have your opacity, uh, your hardness, and you can add some smooth on top. And yeah, that's it. So so, so I, in cats, you have a a CG uh, forearm, and you have yeah, a regular exactly. hand. And were you trying to like take this part and like warp it to match or something? Or how? Yeah, it, yeah, it's uh, it, it's not. Yeah, you you can use it also to warp something. Yeah, actually, it's a warp. But you you can use also here the spline warp. But you know the spline warp, the grid warp is really heavy. Uh, yeah, it's heavy and it takes forever to set yeah. up too. <laughs> exactly, because you need to draw the line, then uh, move it, then duplicate it, and everything. Uh, this is really, I would say, yeah, immediate the the approach. Uh, you have, you know, the brush is really easier to. Yeah, yeah. To, That's to an awesome, with. awesome tool. Were yeah. you the one that made the morph tool? Uh, no, this one was uh, um, uh, e. Year one, year one. Uh, I don't remember the, the right name, but no, I didn't. I used that tool. It's, oh. it's awesome, but no. I uh, love that tool. That mm, thing yeah, is yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I'm, I yeah, can't live without it me, now. <laughs> saved my ass, my ass yeah. uh, a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> where, would we be, where would we be without that tool? I mean, my God. <laughs> yeah, you is know. that. Um, and in this case, I did the same for the motion blur. Um, this is uh, an image without, I mean, uh, a plate, an element without motion blur. Oh, let me disable it. So you, you see changing, but I mean, just going down without anything. So in this case, you can also paint the motion blur. Okay, there is the, this build to do. But um, always with the brush, you can paint the motion blur, and that's it. So and you can control... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, tell me, sorry. Well, I'm just saying, like, is it when you kind of use an automated vector-based motion blur system and you're going, that don't look right, I got to go auto, I got to go, I got to go um, off autopilot, yeah, I, basically. I would, say, I would say, I mean, every time uh, try to use the, the right motion blur, and in this case, of course, uh, you are drawing the motion blur, so it's not accurated. But, for example, in this case, uh, uh, I did one shot with the blood without any motion blur. And of course, uh, one thing was going on the right, one thing was going on the left. And as you can see, for example, I want to do the direction basically of this part here and just paint this part. And of course, you can just go down, up with the multiply and just control. You have the control of the motion blur and everything. It's something, uh, if you want to watch it, there is this guide here creating a custom motion blur. Uh, so basically, it's kind of same technique, but he was creating the motion blur with transform, it was something annoying, uh, I mean, complex, uh, was step by step. In this case, no, you, you, you can just paint and that's it. Of course, uh, you, you can't uh, paint uh, the motion blur in every shot and everything, but for these kind of elements, it's, I guess it's good. I mean, I use it quite a lot. For, for the 3D elements, it's something that uh, is, you know, crazy, like uh, blood, smoke, uh, or, yeah. 
and that's it, I guess. Uh, I have these two new notes, and just yeah, finishing this uh, <laughs> uh, the, this topic, uh, you you can create also the the transform. So the, this is the the classic uh, transform uh, with the expression. So you are here. You can just rotate, uh, move uh, it's the transform, but here you have everything all the expressions. Oh, so, okay. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. But, but final top. Final topi. Here we are. Um, so here I have this helicopter. You can just download download it for free from my website. Uh, it's an helicopter with all the passes and everything. And this expression is uh, really good. I use it quite a lot because it's um, I mean, it's not really heavy, it's light. So with the normal pass, you can relight here. You can change the light, uh, um, I mean, of your object. Let's say this one. And you can use it to drive your, uh, yeah, let's say your color correction, your grade, uh, whatever you want. And changing here, you can create shadows, you can create, uh, yeah, a new light. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's just... great, especially if, say, you rendered CG and yeah. you weren't able to get the underlit part shadowing exactly. or, or ambient exactly. light. You, you can get that in post. Yeah, you, you, know. you can create, in this case, for example, the indirect light. So by, you know, uh, the light from the ground, uh, the refle a fake reflection from the ground, you can rebalance uh, your light. And it's really, really light, so it's, it's not mm, heavy. Yeah, it's uh, nice. I think uh, Tony actually demoed this. He said it. He it saved his rear end a couple times too. Oh, ah, yeah, I yeah, guess. He... I mean, because it's really common in, in yeah. <laughs> uh, in, it's good. Yeah, everyone knows yes, about this. Some render yeah. engines, it's a pain in the rear end to get to project the plate onto the ground, have the ground light light up the bottom of the CG. Yeah. So you gotta like yes. you know improvise, so to speak. Mm -mm, yeah. And yeah, in at the end uh, we see just a quick uh, deep uh, deep expression. Uh, I guess everyone use it with the deep, especially with smoke, so elements uh, that has less opacity. So you can create a fake thickness. For example, when you put uh, your smoke on top of an object, usually you see the edges are not perfect. So in this case, you can create. A, a fake uh, uh, thickness, basically, just changing this one, and mm, yeah, that's it. Um, in this case, I don't have an example, a practical example, because I don't have a smoke in deep. But you, mm, I would suggest you can download the, this um, uh, this one, this example in deep. It's really good, and you can also I have it here in my uh, 3D object. So this is the the basically the scene. Uh, it's really good. Everything is in uh, deep, and you can test uh, your expression and whatever you want in deep. Uh, at the end, we can convert uh, uh, the deep in depth and the other way around. So here we have our helicopter in deep. We can convert in deep to depth in this way. So here we can check the deep channel and depth. There is something, as you can see, in the red channel, but it's really, really low. So we can go uh, up here, and this is the uh, no, sorry. Ah, okay, here we have the depth normalized. So we have all the values normalized here with this easy expression. So nothing, I mean, there is something, but it's really low. And here you have all your values in deep. And here you have your other expression to convert the deep from the depth. And that's it. So if we check here, we have our deep channel. Uh, you, you need to tweak it a little bit. But yeah, you have it, and we are done. Uh, <laughs> here at the end, <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah, the end of the script. Uh, I, I just tried to put uh, uh, some uh, useful links uh, for the artist. 
uh, I divided them by uh, topics. So here you have uh, some uh, really useful links about the expression node. Here, just the expression in particular TCL something. Here, if you want to study some math, uh, of course about comp, but 3D in general, I would suggest just watch this, um, this blog from NJT in, uh, on Facebook. And finally, uh, at the end, Python and TCL, there are some good uh, guys that share their stuff, Gianluca Dentici. And of course, there is a really good tutorial uh, about Python 101 from uh, Ben, you, you know him. So mm, I guess it's really good uh, tutorial to start with Python from basics and yeah, but there are tons of tutorial and books about it. Well, with that yeah. said, uh, let's uh, let me hit pause and we'll switch over to the questions and and then we'll finish up. Is that cool? Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, hold on. All right, so we have Manoj, Mad Looks VFX. How can <laughs> how how we can understand expressions easily if we are not good with math or programming? Okay. Some expression, huh? it's very hard to understand that. So so when, sometimes if we check some expressions, ATM, it's very hard to understand that. So any tips? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, as I said before, I guess um, this topic is really technical and it's, it's, it's difficult for, for everyone. So, um, of course, if you, if you like 3D, if you like, like comp, if, if you do this kind of thing, so you should know at least a little bit of math just to, you know, understand the difference between gamma gain, uh, these basic uh, operations, at least. So a little bit of math. Um, scripting and programming is not something that you, you, you have to know, but it's something good. I mean, as, as you saw, you, you can do something faster, you can do something lighter, so using less notes. And I would say, I know it's something annoying, but try to... To, to go step by step. So start from basics, from something really, really basic. Um, so, and go go every day to, to learn something new. Uh, I don't know, maybe buy some books, uh, watch tutorial about it. There are some useful tutorials, so one-on-one with Python expressions, uh, everything. Um, and this is my, my, my tip. And of course, uh, Try to focus on something, so uh, try to achieve something. So, for example, I would like to create uh, this tool. I would like to create uh, um, something in particular and try uh, and try to do it. So if you have a goal, I guess uh, it's going to be easier to, to learn something because you have something to, that you, you need to reach. And, yeah, this is my suggestion. Cool. And I think that's it. We just had somebody say something about the mm, channel. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, obviously you're approaching the midnight hour in Italy. Uh, but thank you so much, man, for coming out. Um, we have links uh, at the bottom uh, if you guys want to learn more about Andrea. Uh, again, he spent a lot of time kind of like taking a skeleton script and building it up. So um, I know for myself, I think this was a really awesome introduction to expressions. And we'll probably have you on again. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean... I mean, I would like just to thank you for everything, for your channel, for what you do for um, all, all the community. It's really, yeah, I guess it's really awesome what, what you do. It's helpful for everyone just to share everything. It's, I guess, yeah, it's easier to, to have just one, uh, one channel for, yeah, collect everything, all the videos from the artist. So you, you don't have to spend time just to look for, uh, you know, uh, everything so thank Matt uh, and yeah cool yeah and we'll have a we'll have this script at the bo uh on the website um and well, surprisingly we have a lot of really uh, a lot of people download these these scripts so we'll have at it we just had uh it's funny I just saw the lead 2D <laughs> at the mill in Chicago downloaded the P uh <laughs> PG bokeh tutorial yeah. I'm like wow we got some big shots even downloading <laughs> some of these training videos so um, so anyway, okay, cool. Um, again, we'll probably have you on for more. I'm sure you have more plugins. Besides, did you show all your plugins tonight, or? 
Um, yeah, what I did in the that last was everything, month was, huh? I mean, yeah, I love. I have a lot of other plugins on my website on Wikipedia, so I will try to se- to share more in the next month. Cool, cool. We'll definitely, we'll definitely have you have you on. I'm, eventually, I got to get. Uh, uh, I forgot his name. He's the head of uh, uh, Trickster. Um, um, Alexei the, the Kuczynski or tearing the name apart. Uh, yeah, Kuczynski. Kuczynski. Kuczynski is the the last name. Yeah. Got, yeah, I keep hearing how great this guy is. We got to have him on. Yeah, so. he's. The monster. <laughs> He's a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank yeah, you. I mean, every everyone there. Is, uh, yeah, they, they, they everyone's talking talking him up. I'm like, man, this guy must be an awesome compositor because he seems yeah, he seems like the Yoda of Trickster or something. <laughs> kind of. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. All right, cool. I'll uh, we'll check you later, then, sir. Thanks a bunch. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.